I just think of what are the things that I struggle with? How can I present that in a very concise, potentially entertaining way, but also so that someone can come away from any one of my videos and either be entertained and laugh because they can relate like, oh man, that's totally me. ADHD Rewired episode 422. This is the podcast for those of us with really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. I'm Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker by training and a coach by design. I'm your host and I have ADHD. ADHD Rewired is a more than just a podcast. We are a community. We are wired for connection and you are not alone. Go to ADHDrewired.com to learn how you can join us in our free and secret Facebook group. Get additional resources for every episode, including links to any resources we mentioned on today's show. You can support us on Patreon, sign up for our email newsletter. You can request podcast postcards to distribute to your clients and support groups. Learn all about our award-winning coaching and accountability groups. You can co-work with us in our adult study hall virtual membership community. You can do all of these things by going to our website at ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. I am joined today by Ryan Mayer. You might know him from TikTok. Ryan is a performance and a mindset coach on a mission to help others navig- navigate navigate through the storms caused by ADHD. Ryan calls on firsthand experience to help his clients who, like him, are falling short at work and at home. He helps others to believe in themselves again through empathy, enthusiasm, and education. Ryan's coaching empowers others to live a happier life. Ryan, thanks for being here. So excited to be here, Eric. Long time listener, first time caller. Well, we just kind of met like a month or so ago at Aaron Cross uh, Summit. Yeah, from Hidden ADHD. Mm -hmm. Aaron's great, yeah. So if you have not seen Ryan's stuff on TikTok, I would encourage you to check it out. Although I would also encourage you to maybe do it with somebody else in the room who can help you get off of TikTok. Because that is, you know, Ryan, I think we were talking about this, that I literally don't have the ability to go onto TikTok and not spend like three hours on it. Eric had asked me a great question about, so you create content on TikTok. How do you not get stuck on TikTok? And I told him, I have to have budgeted start and stop times with accountability partners or else I won't stop. So yes, proceed with caution. Cause it really, you know, if you have a case of one more thing, itis, it's like one more thing. I just crack. Cause they're all these short little videos. They are, it is built. And this is not a joke. It is built to be addictive. Like I'm sure people may have heard of the movie about social dilemma, mm-hmm. but this, the reason why TikTok is growing at a wild pace in comparison to some of the other social media platforms is because they have engineered it to be addictive where you have a hard time stopping. So yes. But what's so interesting about TikTok is I have been in the last, I don't know, six to 12 months hearing more people who have been learning that they have ADHD because of TikTok. Yes. And to be honest, that is the reason, one of the big reasons I went there was because knowing it would attract our people, I wanted to be one of the folks that could advocate for them. And there are times where in my videos, I literally say, hey, if you want to like stop using the app, please let this be the time. So I try to help them if they need to. That's great. That's great. So what? tell us your backstory. So I come from the corporate world and I spent 15 years there after taking the path that, you know, most people say that we, and I'm using air quotes, should go on of uh, going through high school, going through undergrad, and then getting a nice safe job in corporate America. But I quickly realized that the corporate world is not ADHD friendly, typically. Because it's the new open concept working environment. And hey, you can talk with your coworkers or you can go play ping pong. And none of that is good. Um, Auditory and visual distractions abound. So throughout my career, while I did see some pretty big success, I was always missing the part where the administrative piece was necessary, but it was really hard for me to get that to work. So that's where things would unravel. I was actually fired from two different jobs. I've had, I think, six of them. The others, I quit or moved on because I was getting bored of it or it just wasn't the right fit for me. 
And I can remember actually everything changed when I went to the 2018 International ADHD Conference, which is where I first saw you. Actually, you gave a great talk on tools and tips and tricks. It was at that conference where I met David Gwerk, the founder of ADCA, the ADD Coach Academy. And we, like a lot of ADHDers do, when you meet someone that you connect with, you're like instant friends. And so we ended up talking for two and a half hours, literally the first time we met. And he said to me, I think one day you might be a coach. I said, well, I don't know. You know, like I really, I'm into sales and we'll see. Well, sure enough, a couple of years later, I found myself signing up for coach training and I've never looked back. So now it's been about a year and a half that I've been a certified ADHD coach. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and David's a great guy. I've had him on the podcast. He really knows this stuff. He does. So there's a couple of things that we could kind of be talking about here. So one thing that you and I have in common is that most of the things that we do in our life require a, a team of support. Do you call it the accountability army? Yeah. So this is when people ask or tell me, you should write a book. What would it be called? I said, I'd probably call it the accountability army because I've realized that I've accepted how our brains work when you have ADHD. And I do not do well when I am either by myself or have like an unplanned block of time. So in order for me to achieve the goals that I've set for myself, or just to stay on track with what I know I need to do, I enlist the help of as many resources as I can. So many times that's accountability buddies that are just friends of mine who also have things they're trying to do. But then I, I'm sure your listeners have heard of Focusmate and accountability body doubling service. And I know you offer your adult study hall, which is also an amazing resource for people to connect with others. I, so I've just realized that in order for my circuits to have energy flowing through them, I have to have another human around, even if it's remotely. When I don't do that, things just fall apart for me and the negative self-talk kicks in. Have you found like certain kind of nuances with accountability for you as to like what types of things work? Because I know for me, like it's, it's very nuanced on how accountability works for me. Yeah, no, I'm really glad you asked that question because when I ask clients about who they could partner with to keep them accountable, if they say their significant other, I strongly recommend against that. Yeah. Because even when my wife will tell me something that I asked her to help me with, or she knows I want to get done. There's something about the dynamic where I know Melissa Orloff, who's a well-known author, um, ADHD in marriages mm -hmm. and in relationships, she calls it the parent child dynamic. Right. And with us having such rejection sensitivity, I say to my wife, it's not what you're saying, but it's just the way you're saying it to me just comes across so harsh, even if you don't mean it that way. And so my nuance there is do not use your significant other because you want your significant other to be your partner, not your boss. When my wife is trying to get me to do something that I said I want to do, that's not the role I want her to play. Totally. And, you know, it's uh, I'm divorced and my uh, my ex for for many, many years early in our our marriage, I used to think, ah, oh, she's so accommodating. It's great. And then like I didn't really realize how not only like codependent it was, but how mm -hmm. disempowering it actually was. She would give me the, the sort of get out of jail free card way too often <laughs> on like working really late. Right. Because she's like, no, I'm building this business and blah, blah, blah. blah. It's like she made that too easy for me to, you know, so at the end of the day, transitions are hard. Stopping's hard. Yes. So if that's hard and there's no like real consequence to like just flying. Working late. Right. Yep. I just kept doing it. So that, you know, what, what I thought was a great arrangement turned out to actually be a, a really unhealthy thing that I didn't realize at the time. And I'm glad you bring that exact thing up because for anybody listening, if you have ADHD, you know how hard it is for us to transition from one task or from one role to another. My wife and I are very blessed to have two kids and I want to be an engaged husband and an engaged dad with them. And right now it's right around the holidays in 2021. And normally my wife works away from home. And the kids are out of the house. But with this being the holiday, like the week right before New Year's, they've been home all week. So I rely on structure. And so normally my wife will call me when she's leaving work to say, hey, I'm on my way home. And that's sort of my signal to I'm going to stop working. And I told her this part is okay. 
like, keep me on the phone until I walk downstairs to the kitchen. And there's something about like, you know, our commute, when you work from home, it can seem short, but it can be really hard to get there. So all I have to do essentially is walk down the stairs to the kitchen where my job is to start getting ready for the family to arrive home. If I don't do that though, then it, it just ruins the whole evening. So now that she's home though, for the holidays, she's had to text me from downstairs because I'm upstairs in the guest room, you know, on calls or working on things and say, she said to me last night, so what's your plan for stopping? And I mm -hmm. literally said, I don't have a plan for stopping, but if you'd like me to come down, please tell me and I'll come down. So that, that gets back to your question, Eric, about accountability army that we need to, as ADHDers have that structure in place to help us with transitions. Cause I just know I won't. I will keep working until my body gives out unless there's a reason to stop. I have requested that she phrases things in the form of a question like, Hey, what do you think about? Or do you know when you are going to, or something like that instead of when you coming down or are you done yet? Or please stop like all that stuff. It doesn't mm -hmm. really work for me. Yeah. I know there was the question that I actually, uh, with, with my ex that, that I sort of coached her to ask me, which worked for me was, is this what you want to be doing right now? Mm, right. Really and if one. I said no, and the follow-up is, do you want help transitioning or stopping? Right. And sometimes I'd be like, not yet. It's like, okay. And it's because it's like when we, we need to feel like we have the option that we are, we have the, the control over the situation. La uh, earlier this week when we were folding laundry, that's one of our times where it's like the kids are asleep and we get to catch up and have a conversation. And also I will fold laundry because, you know, we're not so good at that usually, but when it's a, an event, that's a lot easier. But during that folding event, my wife said something to me. I was so excited about whatever I was talking about. And then the way she said it just pretty much shut it down. And I was like, you just got to let me have that excitement for a minute. In the book, uh, Faster Than Normal, if you've heard Peter Shankman, he's got mm -hmm. a podcast by the same name. He has a little section he dedicates to significant others. And he too is divorced. Like a lot of people in the ADHD community, there's relationship challenges. But he said to significant others, let us enjoy our idea for at least 24 hours before you tell us that it's not going to oh be God, a good idea. Yeah. Because we, you know, we do usually, you know, uh, give into reason just like, yeah. we just need to sort of like ride that excitement wave. I totally get that. And then like, yes. once the dopamine kind of tapers off a little bit and we can kind of think about it more logically, it's like, Mm, oh, okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's not. The greatest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But let, let us ride that wave just for a little bit. So let's, let's do this. Let's ride the wave of this conversation, but let's actually let it come crashing down for just a moment. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to uh, kind of dive into part of your story because a lot of it is resilience and kind of coming back from some challenges. So we will get to that when we come back. This is Coach Kat Hoyer. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from our coaching community. If you're looking for ways to create better to-do lists, set goals and milestones with actionable steps, and want to prioritize what's most important in your life, then join us and other adults who do understand what it's like to live with ADHD. The 28th season of ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Groups begins April 13th, and we still have my four spots left or less with me. So if you want to join our next coaching session, now is your last chance. Go to coachingrewired.com and start your pre-registration process by clicking on the green button at the top of the page to get your name to our interest list. And we're doing one final registration on March 30th at 1 p.m. Central. That's tomorrow, March 30th at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. So if you want to join us for our next coaching season, now is your last chance. Come grow with us and get started by going to coachingrewired.com. That's coachingrewired.com. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from Adult Study Hall. Get more done with the virtual co-working community built for adults with ADHD by adults with ADHD by going now to adultstudyhall.com. Get studying for your next exam, start your spring cleaning, and gather up those tax documents and more using real-time accountability. 
at beltstudyhall.com. Your membership includes access to our themed and guided sessions, also known as Ash Plus sessions, for writing, for working out, decluttering, and your most dreaded tasks. We also have a job search session led by ADHD Rewired Coach and HR Specialist, who's sitting right here, right next to me right now. Say hi, Kat. Hey, hello. And um, so she does that. And our newest session for all of our finance related to do's. So check all of that stuff out. Your membership will also get you connected to Adult Study Hall 24 7 or Ash 24 7, which is a dedicated Zoom room that I bet you can guess how long it's open for. Wait, is it 24 7? It is 24 7. Yes, right. Consider joining the virtual co-working community built just for us and harness the power of real-time accountability with other adults with ADHD who just get it. Head in over now to adultstudyhall.com to learn more about our Ash Plus sessions, our 24-7 drop-in room, and to stay up to date about any upcoming sessions. The doors are open at adultstudyhall.com. Come work with us. That's adultstudyhall.com. All right, we are back. So, Ryan, you you had said it kind of earlier in this discussion that you were uh, fired from a couple jobs as a result of your ADHD. Mm-hmm. So you, you hit some some real, I guess, tough road bumps with how your professional life was was sort of panning out. Tell us a little bit about that. So anybody who has ADHD, you've probably experienced something like this where you get told that you have so much potential if you would just dot, 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 fill in the blank, prioritize, show up on time, keep things organized, turn in your reports. Again, like just the administrative aspects of a corporate job, they need to happen. So I want to put that out there first. I understand that those things definitely need to happen. Um, So I recruited medical professionals and part of the aspect of that because of patient safety We had to make sure that the person had a license that was current and active, which makes total sense. So the part that was so frustrating was I was one of the best on the team when it came to convincing the doctor or the nurse to join our team. And how'd you do on those reports afterwards? So let me just take a deep breath. No, so that then, of course, then the part where it all came unraveled for me was when I had to do the things that they're very simple, typically. But I would have to log into a certain website, verify that their license was up and good to go. And that was the part that I would honestly just forget about. Because to me, if you think of the analogy of like the hunter, because we have hunter like brains, I would have already killed the wildebeest. And like now I, I forget that I have to go drag it back to camp and cook it and all of that stuff. I was just on to the next hunt. Mm. That ended up being a big issue. And then, you know, changing the status of the person in the system that says like they are now accepted the offer. We are moving to the verification of license stage and all of that. So that was a big struggle for me. I tried to get a little bit innovative. There's a concept known as job sharing. So I approached one of my colleagues who was uber organized. And part of our job responsibility was presenting to the various departments at the place we worked at. And the departments loved me and I really enjoyed presenting. My colleague was the exact opposite. She despised doing the presentations, but she was very, very good at the organizational part. So I approached her one day and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. When I recruit these folks, if you can just update my systems, I will do all your presentations for you. And she's like, that's so easy. Great. We can totally do that. And I thought, Eric, that I had like solved the mystery. The problem was the administration didn't feel the same way Mm. because when they found out what I was doing, they just said, we don't care if that works better for you. That's not the way we do things. And so to me, it was so sad how short-sighted that was because I had come up with an innovative solution as we do so often. It was a win-win-win all around for everyone. So then when I got fired from that job, I can still remember that moment because obviously there's a little like, you know, PTSD around that for me. But it, it was him coming in and saying, it's really hard for me to do this, Ryan, because you are, and this word kind of triggers me, you are an anomaly. And for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it is a very perplexing situation, basically, where I was so good as a recruiter, but I was terrible on the administrative part, but that was, a, that was necessary. So then I got fired from that job. 
what happens in those moments, and this is what I really want to impart to the audience is every time I got fired from a job, because that was the first of two times it happened to me, it's very easy for us to attach our worth as a person yeah. to our performance in a job. But what I came to realize just over time is that it wasn't that I was a bad person or a failure. It was just that those jobs weren't a good fit. They weren't the right fit for my personality. And I worked at organizations that were not willing to adjust certain components of it. Even though I requested accommodations at both places, they weren't willing to do that. So had you disclosed that you had ADHD? I, I did at both places. And so now when clients ask me about disclosing, and I know this is sort of a hot button topic uh -huh. when it comes it's, to ADHD. It's controversial, work, yeah. To disclose or not to disclose? That is the question. And my answer is don't disclose. And obviously it depends because if it's a organization that is super understanding and they're open to working with you and everything, that's different. But I find that most corporations, they're just not aware of everything with ADA and all of the accommodations that we are, at least in America, the Americans with Disabilities Act, you know, those are things that we are entitled to as long as it's not a financial burden to the organization. So anyway, I, I had made those requests, but many times I think it was too little too late and they felt that it was an excuse. Mm. That's just such a hard conversation because I, you really have, as an ADHD or you don't have much ground to stand on because you can't deny that the results that they're looking for are not there. And it's so hard to describe the invisible disability that we have. But it would be like them asking someone who wears glasses or contacts, like everybody else can see just fine. If you just squinted a little harder, you could see okay too. It's like, actually, I really can't. So to circle back to your question though, I felt like I got tossed out like yesterday's garbage. Mm. It, it was so painful. Like every day we try so hard coming in early, staying late, working on weekends, and because of how things have to be in a corporation legally and everything like that, they come in and I can still remember, they say like, you know, we need your phone. We need your yeah. badge. We need your laptop. And you need to be out of here in 15 minutes. It's like, wow. Security is going to come and uh, escort you exactly. out. <sighs> yeah. Like I have worked here for a pretty good amount of time for an ADHD or like four and a half years. And I had 15 minutes to get my stuff. And That's leave. so shitty. So then bouncing back though, again, the realization was. It actually wasn't me. It was them. Yeah. They weren't willing to make adjustments to leverage my strengths. So in the end, it was actually for both of those companies, it was their loss. I could have done great things at both of those places, but I think I was meant to do what I'm doing now. I've just found such a supportive community there. Mm. Let's, let's talk a little bit about TikTok. How do you create content on TikTok? Because it's you know, it's it, to me, I'm wondering, is it one of those things that it's like you kind of make it look easy, which is probably means you're putting a ton of work into it. Like, how, how do you approach the making of the content? There's a couple of ways when you've been doing and this probably is the same way for you with what you do. But when you've been doing something long enough, you start to see the opportunities. So I jokingly say that I see life in TikToks now where like something will happen with my ADHD and immediately I think hmm, that could be a TikTok. And I actually have the task manager in my phone. I have a category in there with a list of like potential TikTok ideas. So I build up a whole repertoire in there. And how do I limit my time? Every single work day, I block off time to work on it. And I just finished writing down my goals for 2022. One of the things that I want to do is start batch creating. Basically, what I do is I have a bunch of different categories, which from what I have lived in my life and my friends and my network of people with ADHD, I know are kind of hot button topics or like things of interest, like prioritizing, procrastination, sleep, energy, diet, self-care, like these different things yeah. that are like, yep, check, 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 all these things. I just think of what are the things that I struggle with? How can I present that in a very concise, potentially entertaining way, but also so that someone can come away from any one of my videos and either be entertained and laugh because they can relate like, oh man, that's totally me. Like you accidentally take two weeks, get back to a text message. We don't mean to do that, but it's funny because we all have done that. Like, oh man. But then the other component is educational. Like if I'm not going for the funny angle, I definitely want them to watch it and go, hmm, I've never tried that before. And I think I shared with you one of my most popular videos. I call it an ADHD snack hack. And 
what I do is I literally just take the clementines, like the little oranges. I find like the opening is if you have ADHD, you probably have food rotting in your fridge. <laughs> Totally. And everyone goes, oh my gosh, totally. Well, what I do is on Sundays, I will use a citrus peeler and I peel enough to have two clementines each day. And then I put it in a clear container in my fridge so that when, not if, when I'm running late to that next meeting, and I go, oh my gosh, I haven't eaten lunch or I didn't get a snack. I can pull open the fridge and there's a clear container with already peeled clementines. Because I find that when I don't have them peeled, I just know I'm not going to eat them. But when they're already done, I can eat them. <laughs> so that's great. So you I mean, you have a ton of followers on there. Yeah, I'm approaching now almost 400,000 followers that's incredible. on TikTok. That's amazing. I have goosebumps just saying that. And it's so humbling because this is, I guess, the message I want to make sure the audience hears is what TikTok has allowed me to do is to be, for the first time in my life, authentically me. And I get a little emotional every time I talk about this because so many of us have to mask yeah. so much of ourselves yeah. because that's what we think the world wants to see. But what's amazing is once I took off the mask and I was just me, the person that my friends and my family know is truly myself. Once I did that, all of a sudden things just started taking off like a rocket. And it just goes to prove that I wear this necklace and it says no fear. I'm a faith based guy. And I just decide before I record each TikTok, I think I don't care what anyone thinks, because if this can reach one person and help them to know they're not alone, then it's worth it. So when I posted that one about the Clementines, for example, I was like, this is probably gonna be a total flop because like, who cares about me and my oranges? Little did I know it was going to be like one of my top videos of all time thus far. And, uh -huh. and it's because I was just authentic. Like, I think it's kind of embarrassing that I can't eat an orange if I don't peel it. Like what? But now it, it just shows when you're authentically you and you find something you love, like it just makes all the difference. So let's take one more uh, quick break. And uh, when we come back, you have a uh, this idea about walking a razor's edge. And so I'd like to explore that when we come back. I am here with... Um, well, our leadership team. So we just spent the last two full days creating the vision for what the future of this business is gonna be. It's really exciting. And so we have just a few minutes here with uh, both of our, our leaders. We have, we have uh, one of our coaches, Kat Hoyer, who uh, came in from Ohio. Hello. And we have Lisa Cisla. And so she's our, my executive assistant, community manager, and uh, some other title we'll probably come up with very soon. Ooh, new title time. Mm-hmm. So I have a question for Lisa because she asked us, what are we going to talk about? And I came up with a question for her because over these last two days, so Lisa's been with the company now seven weeks. And what I saw over the last two days is somebody who is incredibly passionate about what we're doing. And to see that, and I'm going to cry, <laughs> in a really short period of time and knowing like you've been really involved in stuff that's going on in the community. You've seen, you've been a part of registrations. So you've seen people coming in, but you've seen people in alumni so they're continuing their journey and then also seeing people that have gone through coaching and kind of where they're at with that what i want to know is what you have seen in your seven weeks that has you so passionate and believing in adhd rewired the way you do already first of all it's entirely not entirely but a good portion of it has come from eric and his incredible ability to make you feel welcome and the inclusion and you could just feel the love and the passion that he has for the community and the company and all of us that are here and that was really important and honestly a lot of it has come from the members themselves saying how much they feel like they belong and even even like the brand new ash member they come in and they're like i don't really know what i'm doing but i'm really excited about what's here and i'm like that's incredible because we are all so excited and i was like i don't know what i'm really doing either but i'm really excited to be here so yeah so i remember one of the things that i because I, I got to be a part of the interview process with you and one of the things I asked you was, 
what was important to you in a job. And that's when I was like, okay, she just needs to see what I, I told Eric right away. I'm like, get, get her into the last, the last session of the coaching groups. Let her see that because that's when you'll know you're making a difference in people's lives. But can we also announce that Lisa is going to be my admin, one of my admins for the coaching group this season. So we figure that's a great way to let her see what's going on. And as we're looking at all these different strategies and things like that, she'll be able to not only see what we can do maybe to improve, but also what we're doing that's going right. And then really see the impact that it's having on everyone and, and why. So I'm super excited about that. It is exciting. Yeah, I, I'm very excited for the opportunity. I'm totally ready to just jump right in and get started. And I can't wait. Support for ADHD Rewired comes from our patrons. If you're listening to this ad but wished you could skip it without having to stop it or push any buttons, there is an option for you. Consider becoming a patron at the $5 a month level, which gives you access to ad-free episodes of the show when you become a patron over at ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. Perks are just $5 a month, and that gets you ad-free episodes of this show. And support can start at any amount. And at $25 a month, you can join me and other patrons at this level every fourth Tuesday of the month for our monthly coaching call on Zoom. Our next Patreon-only group coaching call is on Tuesday, April 26th at 3 p.m. Central. That's Tuesday, April 26th at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. If you want to join us but you aren't a patron yet or simply want to give because you believe in the work that we are doing, we'd love and appreciate your support. Consider joining us over at ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon and become a patron today. Remember, perks start at just $5 a month and support can start at any amount. That's ADHDrewired.com slash Patreon. And thank you so much. All right, we are back with Coach Ryan Mayer. So when we were talking before we hit record, you were sharing with me this idea of walking a racer's edge. And if I understood it correctly, this is sort of like that feeling of like the house of cards that's Mm going to fall down. That sort of perpetual feeling like, oh, I'm going to be screwing something up real soon. I was saying to Eric when he asked me the question originally that today happens to be New Year's Eve 2021. And New Year's Eve is typically associated with people staying up late. The ball is dropping. You're up with friends and maybe eating or drinking more than you normally would. And as I get up in age, you know, that has a bigger impact and everything. But we work so hard as ADHDers to maintain balance. So it comes from, you know, getting enough sleep, getting exercise, having a good diet, balanced relationships, and all that, that I call it the razor's edge because it's such a thin line where For example, if I stayed up till three in the morning tonight, just because I was like, wow, it's New Year's Eve. And if I had too many drinks or ate poorly, all of a sudden, everything that I've done to build up and get into a good rhythm gets destroyed. To your point, it's like a house of cards. It all comes tumbling down. And then I have to rebuild it piece by piece. Like, okay, try to get back on track with sleep. Make sure you're exercising. It's really hard to get all the momentum going. So it's just something for us to keep in mind, especially because with our dopamine shortage in our brain, we tend to like, once you start, you have a really hard time stopping anything that feels good. Because if some feels good, more must feel better. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I find that especially with, uh, with food, for me, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving because it's, yes. it's just about the food. Um, mm-hmm. I know that you are a person of faith. I'm not really a person of faith. So like one of the things I, I like about Thanksgiving is that like, it's just food and there's no God and it's just great. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I'm like, this is the year I'm not going to overeat. So I actually have learned that on those holidays where it's like all of my favorite stuff because I have a lot of food sensitivities. It will throw me off for like a week. It makes me, my brain foggy and it's just like, I feel crappy. So I, I learned to really, really be very uh, more intentional about those kind of choices that I'm making. 
And, th- and that's a great lesson that it takes us a lot of time to learn too. And I think it gets back to what we talked about earlier with the accountability army or setting up the structure, because in going into those situations, I will say to my wife, for example, if we're going to a place where we know it's a very fun group and they might want to stay up super late, I already know myself well enough that I won't be able to say no in the moment. Mm-hmm. So I say ahead of time, we'll have like a, a signal. She'll be like, Hey, Ryan, it's getting to be that time or, you know, whatever we decide. And then it's like, oh, that's right. I should leave. And then I'm usually kind of grumpy about it, but I know that she's right. And my future self thanks me. <laughs> uh, a month or two ago. So every month in my alumni community, I, we do a, a monthly happy hour where it's just, you know, we all get together on Zoom and we just uh, kind of hang out. And yeah, so it's scheduled from like 530 to 630. It has often gone until like two in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. I could see that. And it's fun. And I, and I, I love doing it, but there are certain times where I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I can do an hour and I have to get up. So what I'll do is I'll add to my name on Zoom, must leave at, at so-and-so time. So it's, it puts it right out there, you know, it's sort of that army of accountability, right? It's like, hey, Eric, can you say you have to leave? It's like, uh-huh, I'm going, uh-huh. And, and the, like the critical part there is your intentionality and putting that structure in place to allow others to help keep you accountable. And I can think back, one of the other things that was a big stumbling block for me early in my coaching career is I would book calls on the hour. And I would say, this call is going to be 45 minutes long, and then it'll stop at 45. And then I'll have that 15 minutes to kind of do any follow-up and then go get a snack, go to the bathroom, whatever. Well, guess how many times I stopped at 45? Um, Maybe once, (laughs) because every other time it would just go over. So I, again, was like talking it over with my wife in this case, and we decided the best way for me to do it, the only way I will stop is if I book my meetings all back to back. So Mm. what I ended up doing was stacking it. And then once my last call is done, I schedule a focus mate or some other kind of accountability, Uh or again, I must stop. So at the end of my morning from 1115 to 12, those, so it's 45 minutes, it's those three 15 minute blocks I couldn't honor previously. I've now cut them off of each of the meetings and stacked them at the end. So now I have that dedicated time and I do that at the end of my day. Too. I really like, you know, when I used to do my, my clinical practice as a therapist, I mean, I've worked with a lot of therapists and like writing case notes. It's like the, mm. the bane of our existence. It's yes. like, yes. you know, I just was pretty diligent about like not telling myself that I'll, I'll write it after the end of the day. Cause it's like, I won't want to do it. Like, Cause one of the things I realized I never actually want to do it. So to think that I'm going to want to do it more later, I'm just lying to myself. Right. But what I love is you actually made a, figure out a way to sort of stay in that focus mode with your, with your people, but then also mm-hmm. using people to yep. get yourself to, to work on writing your notes. I think that that's it awesome. Can, that's a great, thank that's a great you. Cause it's the same thing for me because the later version of us, I call it the attention battery. Like when our attention battery has almost run out and it's like 4 35, six o'clock, there's no way I'm going to be as excited. Like a call this week where I said, Hey, there's all these resources. I'm going to send them to you for planning for 2022. Later that night, I did not want to do it. So I was really glad that I had the time blocked off to get her the six or seven attachments And it's amazing, even though I coach in this space and I've learned so much, it's so fascinating to me how painfully hard it is still to just go into my Google Drive and like attach those things to an email. I like emails that require attachments. So I, I I met with a financial planner Uh, when I was going through my divorce, my accountant actually referred me to this financial planner. I talked to her for an hour and she was so helpful because I was like so clueless and all the financial stuff. And I'm just like, I need you to make it Sesame Street simple. Like my brain just shuts down. Like she was so good. Like all these questions that I was just like so anxious, didn't understand. She like helped me. So I was like, all right, when I'm ready to actually like work with the financial planner, I'm going to hire you. So I I called her uh, last month and we're going to work together. And she's like, all right, just like send me all of your financial documents. I still have not done it. What I have learned to do because I hear that I would call her. This is just what I would do for myself in this situation. I would say, Hey, financial planner lady, um, I want to send these to you, but I just know I'm not going to, I need to hop on a call with you for like 10 or 15 minutes. And you just sit with me and it's a body double thing. I've done that before. Cause like all of my internal team that I work with, they know if I tell them, Hey, I'll get that to you. I'm not going to get it to them unless we sit on the call together and then we do it together. So I just, it's great Being strategy. okay with that. Yeah. Being okay with that. 
And, you know, it's, it's so, it's so, I think, um, cause when I am sharing strategies like that with, with my clients, they're like, oh, that's like, that's just so great, but it's so hard. How do you just like accept that you need to do that? And I'm like, cause it's harder to not accept that you need to do that. Because I'm sure that it's tearing you apart that like, you know, that she's waiting on it and that nothing can happen until she gets those documents, but yet you can't get yourself to, to do it. I have a concept with my clients and I refer to it as total unconditional acceptance, which is like obviously kind of a pie in the sky, but the idea is just, you have to treat yourself like the inner child that we are in many ways. I have a four-year-old son when he doesn't want to do something, you know, I have to work with him as a four-year-old and be like, Hey, it's okay, buddy. I know how hard this is. Let's do it together. And I need to basically talk that way to myself and have unconditional acceptance that your brain just doesn't work that way. Like we want to be able to just fire up the email and send it, but it's just not going to happen. Once we accept that it's way easier. So what do you think is your unique perspective on ADHD and if, if you were to have a bumper sticker slogan for like, who, who is coach Ryan Mayer as, as an ADHD coach, what would, what would it be? Well, that's two different questions. So I would say who Ryan is. My biggest passion is making mutually beneficial connections. There's a couple people that I told you that I would connect you with, which I'm really proud I already did one of them. Um, and then that, so that's me. I'm self, the self-proclaimed super connector that I just love helping people meet each other if I think they can help. Such a great skill. And I think that that is part of ADHD because I know that there's the big debate about, is this a curse or a superpower? And I won't even go there. I'm squarely in both camps, but the parts that I do really well, how I would describe it is when you're in the zone, there are not many people who are better at what you're good at than you are. Mm -hmm. So to get more specific, this was a, a skill that I was like, what am I going to do with this? When I meet people and have conversations with them, I can remember it for a really long time, very clearly because I'm an auditory processor. Eric, I now have 40 clients in six countries across the world. And what's so strange is when I get on a call with them, it's like Neo in the matrix, like I know Kung Fu, but I just immediately like remember all of our conversations. So weird. So I'll be like, well, how's your, uh, your dog river doing? Did he end up having that surgery? And they're like, how do you remember that? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> so my unique ability is just like when I meet people, we have a conversation, it stays in my mind. I'm, I'm very much that way when, uh, especially when I would do my one-on-one -on -one client work, it, but it was, what was funny to me is I would remember all like the backstory while I'm like in the office with, with this client. I would often have to glance down at the folder to remember their name. Yep. Like in the middle session, I was like, it, it's just like, wow, that's funny. And I would often Absolutely. like call myself out on it just so they know that like, this is part of ADHD. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ryan Mayer, where can people find you? Where, where do they look up on TikTok? So you can look up ADHD coach Ryan and it's ADHD underscore coach underscore Ryan. Super quick side note on that you know that you're starting to get bigger when there are fake accounts of your name. Nice. So just look that up. And the one that has more followers than the other pretend ones is actually me. Then my website is ryanmayercoaching.com and it's M-A-Y-E-R. And that's where they can find me on all the socials, Ryan Mayer Coaching. I would love to have people follow me. Your listeners can be part of my accountability army that by the end of 2022, I will have 2 million followers Ooh. on TikTok. That is my goal. So if all of you can follow my stuff and share it, that would really mean a lot to me. That's awesome. Brian Mary, thank you so much. Thanks, Eric. And I just want to say a quick shout out to you for all of the work you've done. Honestly, I've been following your stuff for a really long time and the work you do, it's so life-giving to our community. Mm. So thanks for doing what you do. Mm. Thanks for saying that. I appreciate that. This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing, and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find timestamped summaries and additional resources for each episode. Apply to join our free and secret Facebook community. Learn more about our award-winning intensive online video-based coaching and accountability groups. Join the Adult Study Hall Virtual Coworking Membership Community. 
find all the other podcasts on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. Sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content that you won't hear anywhere else. And use the search tool to find episodes on specific topics. You can do all of this at ADHDrewired.com. While you're there, click on the Patreon button. If you are a regular listener, consider making a monthly contribution by becoming a patron. If you are able to financially support my work, it would mean a lot. This show is free to you, the listener, but it's not free to produce. Plus, patrons get cool perks like ad-free episodes and access to recordings of coaching calls and $25 a month patrons can join me once a month for a group coaching call. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tibbers. You can like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash ADHD Rewired. If you're a coach, therapist, or related professional, connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com slash Eric Tibbers. Subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube to see selective interviews and other videos I've made. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends, family, your therapists, your coaches, doctors, siblings, parents. And if you, your coach, therapist, doctor, or ADHD support group leader would like a pack of podcast postcards to hand out, you can request those at the website, ADHDrewired.com. If you are a member of Chad, Ada, or any other ADHD support group, please be sure to tell them about this show and all the shows on the ADHD Rewired Podcast Network. You can even show them how to download it on their phone. And if you really loved this particular episode, please hit share on your podcast player. I'm only one person and I do count on you to help spread this message. One of the biggest things that you can do to support this podcast and help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on Apple Podcasts or any other app that supports reviews. And don't forget to hit subscribe so new episodes are automatically pushed to your favorite podcast app. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Here is my list of must-listen-to audiobooks updated July 2021. Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, attached by Amir Levin and Rachel Heller. Atomic Habits by James Clear. The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. Crucial Conversations by Carrie Patterson. The Coaching Habit by Michael Stainer. The Body Keeps Score by Bessel van der Kolk. Rest by Alex Sujong Kim Pang. The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. Make It Stick. The Science of Successful Learning by Peter Brown. The Productivity Project by Chris Bailey. Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics by Dan Harris. Change Your Questions, Change Your Life by Marilee G. Adams. I always recommend to my coaches and admin that they read that book. The One Thing by Gary Keller, a required reading for all of our coaching group members. Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Baden. The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. The Art of Asking by Amanda Palmer. And if you're looking for something a little bit more magical, I have fallen in love with the Harry Potter series and the narrator, Jim Dale, is amazing. And of course, if you haven't yet boarded the Brene Brown bus, all of her stuff is great. Starting with Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, and The Power of Vulnerability. And if you're an entrepreneur or leader, be sure to check out her book, Dare to Lead. Do you have something that you would like to share? Click on the podcast tab at ADHD Rewired. Click the button to be a guest at the top of the page and schedule a 15-minute interview. This is Eric Tibbers reminding you to keep learning, growing, and connecting. Self-care is not selfish. No matter what you get done or don't get done, you are still enough. And no matter how hard it feels, we can do hard things. And we don't need to do them in the hardest way possible. Thanks for listening. I'll catch you next week.